Hi guys, this is Pestilli and welcome to another Escape from Tarkov video. Today I'm going to be covering everything in the uh, fourth Talking Tarkov. And uh, so during this whole discussion, let's say the review, uh, I'm going to have all the animations and like leaked footage playing in the background. And then I'll just continue talking and go through all the major points. So last night we had 0 0.8, 0 0.5 release, and then there's going to be another one of 0 0.8, 0 0.6 released. Then in a few more weeks after that, there'll be 0.9. So and 0.9 will actually have a wipe. So that's something to look forward to if you're keen to have a wipe. But they're still not sure exactly how the wipe's going to be. If it's going to be a complete wipe, if you're going to hold on to some of your weapon skills or uh, you have your tasks done, there's going to be a different kind of wipe. So we're not sure what that really is yet. Hopefully we'll get more information on that. So uh, they brought up the discussion of they're working on the animations for meds. Uh, and hopefully that will be implemented in not too long. And then Anton brought up the point of uh, about the changes to med. So in particular, bleeding. Uh, and then it, it kind of went into a discussion of balance uh, of, of enjoyment. So how's it all going to work? So there's a lot of work going into the animations for all the me uh, different types of meds within the game. And they're going to take time to implement how you use it. So uh, there was discussion about maybe changing it so... Instead of healing from the get-go, you have to wait towards the end of the uh, timer bar to be healed. Uh, and they're, they're trying to retweak it to make it harder to heal yourself instantly while running kind of thing, but it still have the potential to uh, slow the game down that just a little bit more so you can't be like shooting full auto and healing at the same time through damage. Uh, this then went into a discussion about armor changes and uh, how the damage works. Uh, Nikita brought up the, the fact that they're going to have... Uh, a new type of damage implemented to the armor. Uh, it's going to be pretty much like a kinetic or a brute force damage. Uh, I wasn't sure if he said porcelain or ceramic plate armor, but effectively the armor can break, and then for once you get break the armor, you can go through it that way. So there will actually be a physical brunt damage to the armor, and then for then you'll take damage after it, which will also have a chance of say breaking earlier. So it's not going to be just like a certain type of bolt will instantly go through, and the next one will. Uh, not have enough armor pen and won't penetrate it. It's going to be a li little bit more random, I guess, on, on that side, but it'll still be better because you uh, will have the ability to kill people and it won't be so fixed on. You need this type of ammo to penetrate a particular armor. Uh, and then this went into the discussion of uh, Nikita's going to do a full uh, price rebalance for the helmets and also the chest armors as uh, currently the helmets are too expensive for their use now that the, hip, uh, the face hit boxes are in place. And so that way, it'll be a lot better for that. Then the discussion went in, there's gonna be a new ammo implemented into 0.9. Uh, and there wasn't much information past that, but I guess we'll have to wait and see with the uh, 0.9 patch notes when they finally come out. Anton brought up the point of uh, the scav level should be, or your particular scav level should be affecting what gear you spawn in with uh, to reduce the randomness of like, if you can have a toss up to a, like a, an SKS. Uh, but generally, from the from the chat and everyone that was involved, it was it was kind of not like. But effectively, then Delrich asked, "What's going on about the scav rework? Is there going to be one?" And um, I think Nikita said multiple times now that there's actually going to be a scav rework, uh, including how they do damages and that. But we saw in the most recent patch, point eight point five, that uh, scavs will no longer shoot you as you go behind walls uh, to try and mitigate some issues with uh, damage from scavs when you're behind cover. So then Clean asked about gamut containers and how they'd be used within uh, Tarkov so that still people who have purchased the higher editions of Tarkov that start with a gamut container don't feel like they're being ripped off. But they, cause that, in other words, it can't be removed from the game, but uh, they still need to be tweaked so that it's not so people can just hatchet run in, take certain items, and that's the end of it. So uh, Delrif brought up the point about how certain areas of the map shouldn't be able to have loot that's lootable into your gamma container. This wasn't liked by pretty much anyone. And then Anton spoke about maybe taking five seconds to put an item into your gamma container. So then that way, some people that will be sprinting to the, the marked room won't be able to just put it in there straight away or, you know, particular items like that. Uh, say, for example, the Kiba key. And this was uh, liked a lot more by chat, but I still think um, in general, people aren't happy with any changes to the gamma containers. But I, I'm not really sure where I sit with this. So I'm just going to leave it at the facts for now and I'll, I'll give my opinions towards the end. This thing went into uh, exploiters, the treatment of exploiters and people that are hacking, etc. So effectively, um, 
people that are cheating in the game with hacks, they'll be banned straight out. That's how they want it. And that I'm 100% in agreement with that. Then they went into about exploiters. They said if people are showing exploits or abusing exploits, even using them inside the game, um, that in the future, they'll probably either give them a, say, maybe a three-day ban or three-day ban and wipe their account or just wipe their account or a mixture depending on the severity of the issue. But I kind of really think this would be a good idea because then if you exploit, you could still be helping the game by just finding out exploits and uh, you know making it so the game can be worked or to, to find out the issues within the game. Then once uh, that happens, if you report it, that's fine. But if then if you start abusing it and then trying to ruin the player base and, and the community within the game, well, then you actually have your account wiped and you have to start again from level one and, you know, you're going to have to start all your tasks again and have zero, pa like, all your passives with zero. I think that would be a really good deterrent for people who are abusing this kind of stuff, particularly if you're a high-level person. Like, I've seen level 40-plus people using the pistol glitches and that. So... I think that would be a really good deterrent for particularly the people that play the game a lot. From there, Anton asked about uh, the weapon lifting uh, when you get too close to people. Uh, they ne never really answered this. They just kind of danced around a little bit. There, there does need to be changes with this, and um, I think Nikita made a note of it, but I think that's about as far as that went. Then we moved on to discussion about the arena, the history behind the arena and what uh, Nikita wants for it. Effectively, he wants it to be a, like a realistic ar arena, but effectively something that we can go like a 2v2 competition. Um, so there's like a PvP like element where it's a competition based. So I really do like the uh, the news of this and hopefully it'll be implemented not too far in the future, but it, it's not going to be anytime soon, I, I don't believe. So it still sounds like it'd be a good thing. Then uh, 4.9, they said that, um, Nikita said that you'll no longer be able to jump off the... Uh, third story of a roof if you fall off the third story you will die so uh, that's going to be a good thing I, you shouldn't be able to jump off the third story of the roof ever particularly full combat gear loadout that's just that should be death if not death broken limbs that you can't heal and pain kill it through and crawl away so you know they, 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 they're working on the way to making all these you know small things better and I, and I do like that they did speak about the next podcast it's probably going to be in about three weeks time and the point nine patch will be either before and after there's no definite date who knows when it's going to be um, I'd probably lean towards the the after uh, as if they're still going to put in the point eight point six patch between now and then who knows so that's with that so that's effectively all the the points on the podcast itself uh, I just want to touch on a few other things to do with the podcast, I guess, because um, for me, I have to get up at 4.30 in the morning to watch it, which I'm happy to do, because uh, I want to find out the information on what's going on with Tarkov. Now, some of you may or may not agree with me on this, but I kind of feel like the, the podcast is a perfect situation for people um, wanting to find out more information on what's happening with the game and where it's heading. Uh, people that are involved in the pod podcast, say the, the special guests, they need to be people that are proactive in wanting to make the game better, have done research on the game, and are actively part of the community of the game. So, for example, Anton is a perfect example, and he, he's worked really hard into making the game better and has a lot of valid points. Uh, as well as Smoke, he when he was on the podcast, was making a lot of very valid points um, to do with the game. So, I don't really know much about Delrith uh, as a streamer or within uh, the Twitch community, I'm sure he's a lovely person, um, just I don't know how much real detail he knows about Escape from Tarkov, like what's his, what's his hour base and that, because when I asked in chat, the only answer I got was from a mod, said he's, I don't think he actually streams it at all, he, he's only played it uh, with some of the players uh, off stream, which he might have played it a lot, but to my understanding, like I, I really want to see people on the podcast asking the hard questions and really pushing for it, and instead of it, it kind of ended up being towards the end, maybe last 40 minutes of the podcast there's only really Anton trying to push for information out of Nikita and, and it wasn't really happening I, I really want to see these podcasters that link between the community and the developers and that way it should be a serious panel effectively where it, I'm not saying it has to be like no funny gags at all but it's it, it's that opportunity for the people to be able to get their voice across and Hopefully in the future, um, podcasts will be more along that that lines. I, I'll probably still always watch them, but but I'd, I'd like to hear your opinions if you guys agree. Like, 
I don't know if everyone watches the podcast. If you're probably watching this video, you probably didn't watch the podcast. But effectively, um, if, if they go for two hours, I want as much crammed into that two hours as possible with as much information to the viewers, the community, and the, uh, the streamers as well because we're all very committed into this game. We all love the game to bits and we want it to succeed. So uh, maybe a little bit more structure would probably be the best way to explain it. But if there was more structure in the, in the podcast, I think that would be like a really, really good addition to the podcast. So, so guys, I'm going to leave it there. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe for future content. I stream Monday to Friday, uh, 9 to 5 Australian Eastern Standard Time. So I also stream on Sundays. Uh, feel free to go check out my Twitch. And lastly, I'll see you next time.